Welcome back. And now I'm going to talk to you about the three biggest myths about off-season training. And so number one, the biggest thing that we hear when it comes to off-season training is people think they need real games. They need to play real games. And this is the biggest myth of all because if you think about, again, in the highest levels, professional hockey, NHL, they don't just finish their season and then start up in another season uh, of games again in the off season and come back to the during, during, during the season again. The reality is, is that athletes need time to recover, rejuvenate their body and their mind, and also to grow. The off season is the time to grow your development, and it, that's not available as much in the, in the in season. And especially at the youth levels, uh, that rejuvenation is critical in the growing bodies. Uh, and the growing minds of young players. So the biggest dangers with, and you see a lot of, uh, of, of uh, unfortunately, you see a lot of spring uh, hockey leagues that just go right into full game, regular game play. So it's another season, and it's people maybe trying to get on a particular team and playing the season with them. But then you're you're not getting a break, and you're going right from one season of games. Uh, right into another season of games and then that season's over and you start the full season all over again. So the number one thing it leads to is burnout. Burnout from the high pressure of, of, of performing in a game um, and also just from doing the same thing over and over again without that break and then coming back to it excited again. Uh, number two uh, danger is that uh, really the, the, in the game environment, the full life's real game, traditional game environment is the uh, least developmental opportunity there is in the game. It's the lowest amount of ice time. So if you just think about if you have three lines and you're playing an hour game, uh, you know, three 15 minute periods, the most ice time you're getting is 15 minutes. Not very efficient and not a great time to grow. And studies show that uh, the amount of puck on stick time in a game is anywhere from 30 seconds to maybe a minute for the top players. So again, not really much chances to grow and develop in those game environments. So it's not efficient, it leads to high burnout. Um, and then the, 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 one of the biggest things is that you're, you're losing your opportunity because to, to focus on the windows of trainability. So rather than a player that's you know, focused on maximizing individual development and getting uh, puck touches and athleticism training and ice time and also a break to do other athletic activities, other sports and other activities, they're now they're actually training in their windows of trainability and they're making massive leaps in their own development and growth compared to a player that's just kind of kind of getting burned down and grinded down and not making those same individual skill leaps, even if they're playing games at a high level. Uh, and then, and then uh, the last couple of dangers of just playing the, you know, the real, real games are uh, injury. There's much more exposure to injury in gameplay, especially at the levels with checking. So if you're continuing to play games throughout without that rest, there's a higher likelihood of injury from those games compared to individual skills training. Um, and then also uh, your time and uh, travel commitment. So generally for games, you're having to go and play at other facilities, whether that be traveling you know, on a plane to a tournament or whatever, or even just traveling to other rinks that may be 45 minutes an hour away, the amount of time now that that takes up and the inconsistent schedule that takes away from other activities, uh, puts kids in cars longer and burns them out over the course of time that because they, they, they have to, the reality is if they're playing at a travel level, they have to do that during the season, they have to travel to some games. So let's take a break from that in the off season and refresh and rejuvenate the body while maximizing their individual skill development at the, and doing the right things in the off season. The, the second biggest, so the, the first myth was I need to play real games in the off season to, uh, to, to grow. And it's actually the opposite of that. You need to limit that. Uh, in the off season to really to really grow and develop. The second biggest myth uh, is that I need exposure in the off season. I need to go and travel to these different camps or tournaments and get uh, my athletes seen by for new opportunities. Uh, and this this is really only relevant when a player is alt is ready to move on from youth hockey right now. Uh, they're going to some uh, uh, junior camp that they're really have. They're moving on from youth hockey. They're going to be playing junior hockey next year. Uh, it's certainly what we see, unfortunately, is way too, uh, players and families focus on this way too soon. Uh, it's even at the youngest age levels to to spend the money and time to travel somewhere to get exposure, uh, especially playing a tournament or something that's that's not going to get great skill development. Can often be one of the biggest wastes of time and resources we see families. Uh, uh, to trying to help their kid, we see them spend money on and time to do. So that you may you know, travel to the East Coast um, 
It's a significant expense and time commitment to go play in a tournament to get some exposure or to some camp before it's time for that player to move on. When really, again, let's come back to what's the focus and goal of the off season. It's to improve their individual skills, development, athleticism, and rejuvenate and recover to prepare for the following season. So again, the players that get better, that get better the fastest, and that love the sport the most, so that means they're rejuvenated and, they, and they're having fun and they love the sport, they're not burnt out, and they're getting better with their individual skills the fastest, those are the players that are gonna be the reality is gonna have the biggest opportunity to play at the next level. And if you're good enough, if you're really good, if you develop really well and you have great character and you work hard and you love the game, you will have opportunities. People will see you, people will find you, and that time will come. It's no sense in forcing the exposure at the expense of uh, 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 an appropriate off-season development plan in order to, uh, to, to do that. It actually sets, sets the player back. And the third, uh, the third myth uh, is that uh, the off-season is not important at all. Uh, it's just kind of an afterthought. Uh, and let's get to the real season when it comes again. And the reality is the off-season is incredibly important. It's just important to know what's, what's important. It can't just mean sit around on the couch and uh, eat Cheetos all day. And it can't mean with no thought about what the goals are for the next season. So again, depending on the age group, depending on your goals, depending on where you want to go with this sport, the off-season is one of the most critical times to, to determine what, uh, how to get to that next level. And again, what... Uh, what we're recommending is maximizing individual skill development and athleticism, recovery, rejuvenation, time and convenience to do other things and activities, grow the passion and love for the sport, grow the athletic base, grow the individual skill set, and work towards a goal for next season and a long-term goal as well. So if you really think, if you take into account all these things, the, 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 the age and the, and the goals of the player, um, what what their goals are for next season, what their goals are long term, and then what to be doing in that off season. Again, the ideal environment, the ideal environments are going to be focused on individual skills growth, uh, athleticism based development, uh, maximize efficiency of time, effort, and finances, convenience and ease of scheduling to allow for other athletic development and activities that keep the body and the mind uh, and social life fresh while getting the most out of those uh, opportunities to develop and grow by getting the most amount of puck touches to the highest level of activities, the highest level of creativity and fun, the least amount of high pressure and specialization as far as having to play a particular position and not taking risks, the ability to be creative, uh, take risks, try new things, try new positions, uh, and, and express yourself and enjoy the game and love the game and work on those individual skills. So uh, hopefully that helps uh, understand and get some goals around your off season and, and really busts some of those biggest myths we hear. Again, the three biggest myths, we need to play real games all off season. We need exposure, we need to get exposed to coaches, you know, especially outside the state or whatever that may be, and that, um, and that the off season is just not important. Uh, so uh, talk with all those things and we'll talk to you guys in the next video.